Uh, my first introduction to golf was around 1968. My brother and I, Paddy Devine, had started around that time or maybe a year before that. And I bought my first set of clubs off of him. He got a, a better set and I bought odd clubs for, for £10. So that was my introduction to golf. At the same time, my brother Denis started around that time. Also Joe Devine and Moss Devine. So we had a regular four ball arranged at that time. Dinny and Joe against Moss myself, and I must say, Moss myself won most of those. <laughs> but that was our introduction to golf, and uh, we, you know, we really, uh, I mean, it was never an introduction to golf because, in a way, we all were involved in golf because we did caddying in our younger years. So it wasn't as, uh, it wasn't as if we were brought in after all and didn't know what was happening. We could hit the golf ball from start. So, um, uh, I won my first um, uh, Despairance Cup, Despairance Cup, Beginners Cup. The first year I played in that, I was second to Jimmy Clark. He was uh, an inspector here with us in the department of P&T of Boston Telegraphs at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was a limit man. And Jimmy won it and I lost three shots. That was my first introduction to golf. I went down from, from 18 to 15 straight away in the first year. <laughs> so, but I mean, I, I'll tell you like that, we had a kind of a knowledge of the game, you know, so it was, um, it was that was it, you know. Uh, then we moved on and um, I played, never won nothing, I never won nothing. You know, I was playing good golf, but could never win. I had a couple of kind of close shares and I could never win. And um, I got a, a, a lesson from David Kennedy. I met him in the uh, club match bay in around 80, 81. And I was getting a good couple of shots off of Davey at the time. And he went around in 31 and 32 shots in the two nines. And I was playing really well and I think the match finished in either the 16th or the 17th. But like, he was playing great golf at the time. He probably played better golf at that because before that, because when he was younger, he had he had never been a great golfer, and he played in that at Bally Bunny. He was well known. Whatever you went, uh, they said, "Did you know David Kindy?" He played in the South and that time. Lots of lads played in the South around that time. I know. I saw Mike Hayes and and Mike Murphy playing, and Bobby Cousin played in the South. It was a different kind of a setup that time. You know, it was kind of a match of a straw play. But anyway, David gave me a hammer. On. And the following year, I'd say, I went into the match play final again and I met Johnny Pierce, another great golfer, originally from Innes, but he was married to one of the McGilligates and Borbui, another good golfer, and uh, I was getting two shots off of Johnny. And after nine holes, he was two up. So I was getting one shot on the back nine which would be the, the eight, eight, which would be the 17th hole. And I went around in the back, two under. So I finished my match on the 17th. So I, so I was coming down anyway, and walking down the, the 9th or the 18th, whichever I like to call it. And Norrie was there, Seamus Normal. And he said, how did it go? I said, I bet Johnny, I bet Johnny. He said, that's the monkey off your back. Right. That's the monkey off your back. That was, I'd say, 82. Then the following year, 83, I was playing good golf at the time. I won the captain's prize. I was playing very good golf, very confident at the time, 83. Um, that was um, Georgie Shire's captain's prize. George was the captain that year. And then, two years after, I won... Um, 85, I won uh, Seamus the Lands Captain's Prize. And 88, then I won. Um, Who's Captain's Prize? Mike yeah. Hayes' Captain's Prize. Yeah. Mike Hayes' Captain's Prize, 88. So, I mean, I had I won nothing until I was 40. So I'd say life begins at 40. <laughs> so it was at 40 years I, I did my wins. I had nothing won until I was 40. And I was playing probably from I was a about 26, 27, around that, maybe 28. So I was playing 12 years without a win. I mean, I was winning, you know, the odd four ball and stuff like that. But that was, um, that was my best years. And uh, during that time then, I won the um, 
golf of the year around that, that time and uh, I won uh, the club match play. Uh, I was playing with, um, he was Fergus working, Breen. Uh, Fergus Breen, he worked in the bank and we played Georgie, Georgie Shire and Eric Desper in the, for, in the final, it was a beautiful Saturday afternoon and uh, it was all flat after 18. So we played up the first and the second and still all flat. So what you're supposed to do by the rules of golf is continue the match, you know. But we didn't. We decided to come out next Saturday again and play start from scratch again. And uh, we won it on the on the eighteenth. Fergus Green played a magnificent shot down onto the eighteenth on his second shot onto the eighteenth green and uh, which was all flat and we won it on the eighteenth. Which was his first win ever win. That was his first time ever winning the competition, which was you not know, like, we, we had a great time. We had a great time. It was great times that time because the club was small. Everybody knew everyone, and it was uh, no, no, as you know, um, the club is so big. If you go out there, I would no, no. If I go out there on Sunday or any day, I would know half the members. But it's just the fact that I'm not, I'm not as involved as I was, you know. But uh, I mean, it was a great club, great club, Castle great club, great history, great people involved, great people that kept the club going in hard times, and um, you know you can you can you could name a, a, a many amount of people. Uh, you had um, uh, Kevin Kennedy. He was worked there. He was the he was the bank manager in Newcastle. He was the the bar. He was the treasurer for years. He was from the bar. Barry McHenry lived across the road. Uh, you had you had uh, Jim Selvin, chemist back in Sulky, Harry Knight, another chemist, great men, great club men. Then you had the Pat Toomey, the teacher of the tech, and Liam Higgins, teachers of the tech. The Murphy, uh, Tim Murphy and Bob Brady, um, Jim Breen, no, all, all all great men. I mean, you, you can name a name, and then you can go to cousins like your oh, Bertie cousin. When, I, when we were caddying, your Bertie cousin, Mick cousin, uh, Joe Crowley. Dr. Joe Crowley, but I can miss title. Um, all great men, and uh, you had the Nashes. I, I did a lot of caddying for um, Dick Nash. That would be Dick Nash, the baker. Um, and Dick, uh, I made a funny relationship, you know. Uh, he, he'd, he'd, he'd actually send up uh, Pat Shine. Pat Shine was uh, Paddy Shine, I think. He worked there at, in, in the bakery with the, Dick Nash, so he'd uh, he'd send. We there was no phones at the time, so he'd he'd he paddy up and he'd say, uh, "We were ready tonight at five o'clock, six o'clock, or whatever." And to be Dick Nash, Doctor Joe Crowley, Doctor Harry uh, Larry Larry Nolan, he, I think he walked up in Tom Bradford after, and uh, another man when he came down on holidays, he was always involved. That would be Jack Moylan in, in the post office. He'd come down every summer to take over from his father in the post office when they'd go on holidays and he was always involved for a couple of weeks. So that was, that was the kind of a, that summer holiday four ball, that's, that was it. We did a lot of caddy in that time. Everyone said, all the young lads in town did caddy in that time. I mean, it, was, it, was, um, it, was, uh, it wasn't uncommon to see a four ball run out to three or four caddies. I remember caddying with Paul Devine one time and that time you, the, the players would go back to the third and the caddies would go up to the bush and over to Tord and Paul Levine was there and Jim Jim O'Brien, Jim Coffey O'Brien and myself and Paul, we all take over the club and start swinging and Paul swung bang into the head across Jim, Jim Nails O'Brien's forehead a big lump like an egg up straight away but I mean that time you might have six or seven, eight caddies out you know, it was fairly fairly common to see a lot of caddies and then, then the introduction of the uh, Caddy Cal. And the introduction of the Caddy Cal brought was came in. And I think the first man to get a Caddy Cal, I, I could be wrong, but one of the first men to get a Caddy Cal was Owen O'Neill in Maiden Street. And when the Caddy Cal came in, the Caddies, the Caddies went. <laughs>